We were here a couple of years ago in 2009 in the summer, but it is February now and much cooler and more enjoyable. And of course the animals and birds are much more active in the cooler climate. When you enter the park, you immediately see the flamingos. I think these are the Chilean flamingos because they have more black on their beak, are pinker than the greater flamingo and have grey legs and pink knees which these seem to have. Flamingos are pink because beta carotene is in the brine shrimp which they eat and so it turns their feathers pink. It's the same chemical that is in carrots and makes them orange. These lovely Arabian gazelles were once hunted in the Middle East. The Nubian ibex is a desert and mountain dwelling goat. In the summer it moves further up the mountain to avoid the heat and comes back down again in the winter. They are easily recognisable by their majestic backward arching horns. These are Barbary sheep, native to northern Africa, where they live in rough mountainous and waterless desert terrain. Like the Nubian ibex, both sexes have horns. If threatened, the Barbary sheep can remain absolutely motionless. The meerkats are exceptionally well known these days as they have been TV stars for the last few years and are probably present in most zoos. They live in groups and are especially known for their skill in looking after their young and keeping watch when they are on sentry duty. Meerkats belong to the mongoose family and live in southern Africa. Taken through glass, a couple of quite active lions, a female enjoying dinner and a young male by the looks of things. Again, taken through glass, the African wild dogs. Wild African dogs are only found in Africa, especially the savanna and lightly wooded areas. They're the largest African canid still in existence and the second largest in the world after the grey wolf. I believe the pups were born at the wildlife park. As far as I know, they weren't in the park in 2009. They are very attractive, but obviously highly dangerous with a fearsome bite. Again, behind glass are these majestic white lions, a male and a female. These are one of a number of species that we didn't see on our last visit. From Wikipedia, I discovered that white lions are not yet a separate subspecies, but are a rare colour mutation of the Kruger subspecies. These banded mongooses mostly live in central and southern eastern parts of Africa. They eat a variety of insects and small reptiles, including snakes. The African wild dog would be one of its predators, and for a den or shelter it often uses termite mounds. There are five species of flamingo, and these not-so-pink flamingos could be greater flamingos. The desert hedgehog is the smallest member of the hedgehog family and lives in arid desert regions. It is widespread throughout parts of Africa and the Middle East. I'm not sure what these are, but they do look rather like possums, which we have in Australia. But of course, they could well be something else. We are standing on a raised gazebo overlooking this desert area which houses a number of the grazing animals such as these giraffes, the Arabian oryx and also rhinos. I can't tell if these are white rhinos with a broad flat mouth for grass feeding or a black rhino with a small hook shaped mouth for feeding on trees or shrubs. The Arabian wolf is a subspecies of the grey wolf and has adapted to desert living. Here we are in the aquatic aviary with these black swans which are endemic to Australia. They are nomadic birds with no set migratory pattern. This marabou stork featured in my video of our 2009 visit. It is not a very attractive bird and feeds alongside vultures on carrion, hence its lack of head and neck feathers. Demoiselle cranes are the smallest and second most abundant crane species. 
The grey crowned crane occurs in dry savannah in Africa, south of the Sahara, although it nests in somewhat wetter habitats. The Asian open-bill stork is a large wading bird found mainly in and around the Indian subcontinent. Adults have a gap in their bill, hence their name. The vulturine guinea fowl is the largest guinea fowl species in existence. The blue crane on the right of the picture is the national bird of South Africa. The white-cheeked bulbuls are found on the Arabian Peninsula and are very common in the UAE, including urban areas. They have orange-yellow vents. The greater blue-eared glossy starling is an attractive bird which has a large range throughout Africa. It's a common species found in open woodland and undertakes some seasonal movements. I can't identify this bird. Could be one that belongs in the pheasant partridge family perhaps. This is a bush stone curlew endemic to Australia which although it looks like a wading bird and is related to the oyster catcher, avocets and plovers, it is actually a dry land predator. It is mainly nocturnal and hunts small grassland animals. The chucker partridge has its native range in Asia on rocky open hillsides that has grass or scrub. Unfortunately it has been introduced widely in other countries as a game bird. The Cape Thickney is a stone curlew. The Humboldt penguins are from South America and breed in the coastal waters of Peru and Chile and are named after the cold water current they swim in, which in turn is named after the explorer Alexander von Humboldt. Well, another interesting visit to Alain Wildlife Park has come to an end. Most probably we'll go again one day on our next visit to Abu Dhabi to see if there are any new species.